Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. So, even on the weekend, we are getting some amazing Commander Legends spoilers, and this one is, let's just say, an uncommonly good, uncommon partner commander. I think I said that right, and that's quite the mouthful, but yeah, let's jump into it with Tormod. So, Tormod the Desecrator is a 4-2 zombie wizard that costs 3 and a black. It says, whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token, and it's got partner. And again, that is partner, not partner with, so you can partner with any other partner that has partner, not partner with. Got it? Anyways, so this is actually, again, I think a very good commander. I mean, that seems like a pretty powerful effect, and especially since you have partner, you can kind of line it up with another partner that might work really well with that effect, and also give you access to more colors. Uh, probably, again, I'm, I'm just going to be focusing on cards that can fit in the deck for a mono black deck right now, because I'm going to let you choose kind of what partners you want with this one. Uh, my recommendation would probably be to at least get blue because of mill, but we'll talk about that here in a second. And again, it says, whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard. It doesn't say creature cards, which we've kind of seen before. Um, I believe the card is, um, what is it? Desecrated Tomb. Uh, it says, whenever uh, one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a 1-1 one, one black bad creature token with flying. This is something that could work in the deck, obviously, if you're going to have a decent enough creatures that kind of can go to your graveyard, come back, and so on and so forth. So basically kind of getting you two tokens instead of one. But again, Desecrated Tomb doesn't count all cards like Tormod does. So yeah, and again, keep in mind it says one or more, so a mass exile effect, uh, unfortunately, if you do that to your own graveyard, is not going to go the way that you want it. Let's say you have 20 cards in your graveyard and you mass exile everything with, say, a Tormod's Crypt, which, yeah, that is uh, that is Tormod. And yeah, this one is tap, sacrifice, Tormod's Crypt, exile all cards from target player's graveyard, so yeah, if you do that to yourself, you're only getting one zombie. Uh, because, yeah, it says one or more. Now, if you've got multiple effects kind of going, you know, one and then another and then another, and you're not exiling everything at once, then you're going to be able to get multiple zombies in a turn over time or whatnot. So let's talk about kind of how to build around this uh, commander and make it as effective as we can. First off, you're going to want some mill cards like Codex Shredder, Wand of Vertebrae, and Perpetual Timepiece, ones that can repeatedly mill you throughout the game. Again, Milling a card into your graveyard isn't going to, you know, activate Tormod. You're not going to, you know, get a zombie from that. You're, you will, though, when you either exile that card from your graveyard or bring it back to your hand or, or, or whatnot or back to the battlefield. So basically, though, you do need that supply of cards in your graveyard that you then can exile or move around or whatnot. And actually, each of these kind of mill pieces, if you can double up on a mill piece, that can also get you stuff back. Like Codex Shredder, you can pay five to tap and sacrifice it to return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Wand of Vertebrae, you can pay two to tap and exile it and shuffle up to five target cards from your graveyard in your library. And Perpetual Timepiece, you can pay two and exile it to shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard to your library. So basically, again... Each of these will only get you when you kind of do that, and, you know, you are losing the mill piece, so it better be a good, uh, better, you better really need that one zombie, because you're only getting, only getting one, but it is nice to kind of have that if you really, really need that one zombie for a block or to finish someone off or, you know, so on and so forth. So again, milling your, yourself is great, but what are those cards in your graveyard that, you know, you can, you can get out of your graveyard and then get that 2-2 tap zombie? A reassembling skeleton can really come in handy. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one skeleton warrior for 1 and a black. Pay 1 and a black to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tap CR, you're basically saying, okay, for 2 mana, I get this back out, and on top of that, I am getting a 2-2 two, two tap zombie into play as well. Bloodsoak Champion, very similar. Can't block. It's got raid. Uh, it's a one, uh, it costs one in a black to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield, but you can only activate this ability if you attack with a creature this turn. You're going to have plenty of opportunities to attack with this kind of a deck when you're making a horde of zombies, so yeah, that's not going to be hard to do. Uh, the Spoiler of Souls actually can get you two zombies, uh, because it is a 3-1 that can't block, and you can pay, uh, pay black, black, and exile two other creature cards from your graveyard, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, at the cost of exiling two creatures, you do get this back in play. So you get a zombie from this leaving the graveyard, but you also exile two other cards, so you get one more zombie because of that too. So essentially, and I believe that's how that works, but yeah, essentially you are getting two zombies for the price of just one uh, creature card leaving, and I believe that's how it works. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. Anyways, 
Um, cough and purge, uh, cabal therapy, dread return cards that have flashback can really come in handy as well, because again, they are in your graveyard. You are casting them from your graveyard. They're basically leaving your graveyard. So yeah, those can really come in handy. Cough and purge can be great because it says remove target card in a graveyard from the game. Uh, this is probably not the updated text. Obviously it's gonna be exile. So basically this can help you get rid of one of your own cards, make you a zombie. You flash it back. You make another zombie and so on and so forth. Cabal therapy, name a non-land card target player reveals their hand and discards all the cards of that name. Uh, flashback, sacrifice a creature. Again, you'll have plenty of ways to, or plenty of creatures to sacrifice with all the zombie tokens that you're creating. So this can be another good way. Or if you would actually just want to make yourself discard a card, you can do that too. If you really need to get something in your graveyard to then, you know, get out of your graveyard and so on and so forth. Dread Return can really come in handy as well. Return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Flashback, sacrifice three creatures. Yeah, again, you're going to have plenty of creature fodder out there and you can get, you know, a, a really important piece back in play just by sacrificing three of your zombies if you need to. And again, Flashing back cards is fantastic because they get you zombies as well. Uh, other cards that you can kind of cast from your graveyard as well are going to be ones with retrace, like Raven's Crime and Siphon Life. Raven's Crime says target player discards a card. So again, if you need to target yourself with that, you can. Uh, you're most likely going to be targeting your opponent because retracing, you're also going to be discarding a card to recast it from your graveyard, essentially. So basically, you are going to be able to keep getting uh, you know that effect over and over again. Uh, Siphon Life, uh, target player loses two life and you gain two life. So that's another way to do it too. This can be a great way to kind of bolster your life total as well as take someone else down, especially if they're low. You can probably take them out with something like this if you cast it multiple times. So those can, again, get you zombies when you retrace them. Uh, another mechanic that can really work well, this kind of a deck, is escape. So cards like Cling to Dust and Woe Strider. Cling to Dust says exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you gain through life. Otherwise, draw a card. So yeah. That can be a fantastic way to get you a zombie and then get you another zombie when it escapes as well. Um, escaping for three and a black, exile five other cards from your graveyard. So five cards is quite a bit uh, just for one zombie. But again, since you're escaping, you're basically getting two, I believe. So uh, Woe Strider uh, is going to be a fantastic card for multiple reasons in this deck. It's a three, two. When it enters the battlefield, you get a zero, one goat. You can sacrifice another creature to scry one, and it's got escape for three black, black, exile four other cards from your graveyard. When it escapes, comes into play with two plus one, plus one counters on it. So this is a creature that can escape uh, again and also be a fantastic sacrifice outlet for you. So yeah, this card can help you out in multiple ways, making you zombies, making you a goat as well. That can can come in handy, uh, especially, you know, again, the more creatures that you have, you know, even with a sacrifice outlet in play, the better something like a Zulaport Cutthroat comes in. And that could be a way that you win, you know, kind of that aristocrat style. Let's drain everyone, you know, by sacrificing a ton of creatures. Again, you're going to have a horde of zombies. Yes, you can attack with them, but you can also just sacrifice and drain if you want to as well. Uh, Zilpore Cutthroat, a 1-1. Uh, whenever it or another creature you control di dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So that can be another way to pad your life total. Shepherd of Rot can be a fantastic way to win with this deck as well. Tap it, each player loses one life for each zombie on the battlefield. Keep in mind that this does count your opponent's zombies as well, if they have any. But yeah, being able to just drain everyone for a ton. Again, you're going to be able to make a lot of zombies. You can activate this, you know, once every single time around the table. You can be draining everyone for a lot. Again, if you have less life than your opponents, uh, be careful with this. But yeah, uh, Liliana's Mastery is another way, obviously, to win. Kind of any kind of those zombie anthem effects, zombie tribal stuff. Uh, zombies you control get plus one plus one. When Liliana's Mastery enters the battlefield, create two, two, two black zombie creature tokens. So yeah, you basically get six power with this just on the spot. And then it also just makes your entire zombie army much more threatening. Again, a 3-3 three, three versus a 2-2, two, two, much better. And then there's some other effects, you know, like zombies have Venice, zombies have uh, Death Touch, so on and so forth. There are other kind of, you know, again, zombie anthem effects that you should really consider for a deck like this. But yeah, I really like the design on Tormod. Again, I, I, I want to recommend, you know, trying to find a partner that can really work well with, you know, either token synergies or working well with kind of combat or sacrificing creatures or getting creatures back or so on and so forth or getting things out of your graveyard. Um, and then also... Uh, you, you know, trying to consider kind of what colors that you're bringing into it. Again, I think blue is probably a good uh, color to consider to add to Tormod because, again, blue has got some great mill effects as well, and that's probably what you want to kind of add to this. But I'm sure there are other ways to add to it, too. You probably add, want to add white if you really want to go hard into Aristocrats. So, yeah, maybe finding a commander that, you know, there are some of those two-color commanders that, you know, are Azorius colors, so maybe that would be a direction to go. But, again, go whatever direction you want with this. Uh, I think this is a fantastic uncommon partner commander. I don't think it's busted. I think it's just, it seems like a lot of fun and, and yeah, very powerful card, but yeah, seems like a, a really good time. So yeah, now it's my turn to hear from you though. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on Torm Tormod are. What kind of partner would you pick for Tormod? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks again and have a good one.